Olympia Stadium 1928 marked the beginning of a road to tradition. In one day, four state titles were decided. Since then, many of the game's finest have been down that road. This year, that road leads to the Palace, where four champions will be crowned. The Michigan High School Athletic Association is proud to present the Boys Basketball State Final. Breslin Center, Saginaw came out screaming to their Class A semifinal. They shot 64% of the first half, including four of six three-point shots. Saginaw staved off a thunderous fourth quarter charge by Battle Creek Central, winning 65-60. In their semifinal, Southwestern took charge early and never relinquished the lead. Jalen Rose caught fire, hitting 11 of 14 from the field, leading the prospectors to a 65-55 victory over Detroit Northern. The Michigan High School Athletic Association Championship State Finals are brought to you by Denny's, the Michigan High School Training Table, Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award, and True Value Hardware Stores, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Our Winners program. And welcome back once again to the Palace in Auburn Hills. It's championship day here on the MHSAA Championship Network. And if you haven't been with us earlier, well, why not? We had three state champions already crowned, but you're just in time to see the fourth one, and it should be a doozy. Let's look back right now and see exactly what happened earlier today in our first game, Class B, Country Day of Detroit defeated Saginaw Buena Vista 59-53. In the Class D game, Detroit East Catholic defeated Colbert 72-58. And then a little bit ago, Saginaw Nouvelle came from behind strong with a big 33-point third quarter to defeat Ishpeming 78-59. That gives us our three champions and sets up our fourth and final game, and it should be a big one in Class A. Detroit Southwestern in the final for the eighth time in nine years, and the question a lot of people have is, will Perry Watson get his championship now? But they've got a strong foe in the Saginaw Trojans. As they've been with me all day long, Ray Lane and Greg Kelser are here once again for a preview of today's game. Well, Gregory, what do you think now, kid? You're going to be talking about that Southwestern team, aren't you? Yeah, I tell you, Southwestern, very determined basketball team. They've been in this championship game before. That's been well documented. But again, I think that they're very, very focused. Now, they've got some injuries to overcome, and we'll talk about those a little later. But I think that they feel this is their year. And when you talk about the Saginaw Trojans, you think about scoring. But yesterday, ironically enough, they were out-rebounded by 10 rebounds. They cannot afford to do that against Southwestern. If they do, they will put them in the loser's bracket. So they have to go to the boards tonight and keep up their good shooting. Back up to you, Rick. Moments away from the Class A state championship here. So we'll be right back. Don't forget, one of your network sponsors is Denny's. And we're back again up in the championship suite, suite 147, where we've been all day long. We're looking forward to one more exciting contest in Class A. We're Saginaw here against Detroit Southwestern. They're here. Let's find out how they got here. From my buddies again, Ray and Greg. Well, when you talk about Southwestern, their whole season has been one big cakewalk, with the exception of about three games. When you look at the tournament, they've had to defeat Detroit King, Kettering, Warren De La Salle, Detroit Finney, Pontiac Northern, excuse me, and Detroit Northern. Southwestern, they've got something to prove here. They've been the Class A runner-up in seven of the last eight years. They're the lone undefeated team in this year's finals. They're big, experienced, and hungry. Yesterday versus Detroit Northern, eight prospectors scored. Eight had two or more rebounds, and they shot 52% from the field. Perry Watson, he's the head coach of the prospectors, and he, too, has a thirst to quench here. 
Well, let's find out maybe, Gregory, if they get their severe test tonight uh, from Saginaw. The Trojans, how did they get here? Well, let's find out for you right now as we take a look down the tournament trail before arriving to the Palace. Saginaw Trojans coming to this game with 23 wins and two losses overall. They're a good, consistent club. Opened up with a, a with a breeze. Saginaw Arthur Hill turned out to be a fairly easy game. The real test form was at 60 57 went over Clarkson and of course uh, they held off a uh, rather uh, Battle Creek Central in yesterday's contest 65 60. You talk about experience certainly uh, the Trojans are an experienced team they'll start a couple of seniors three juniors they have a fellow in double figures by the name of Jesse Drain in double figures in scoring and rebounds but yesterday a guy by the name of uh, Buckley took up where Jesse did not get the job done completely. He was third in scoring when he finished off at 14. But the guy we're talking about was Marcus Buckley, who came off and scored 20. And then they got a fellow by the name of Kareem Hammond, who came off the bench yesterday, scored 17 in the, uh, only 18 minutes. And possibly Hammond was the key. But I'll also go back and say they're going to have to rebound the night. By the way, the head coach of the Trojans is Marshall Thomas. Well, Southwestern, too, they've got some very fine players. Uh, the player that San Saginaw will have to concentrate on most notably is uh, Jalen Rose. But in between, they've also got Vashon Leonard. Now, both of them are juniors, and uh, together they score 31 points a game. But they've got a lot of fine players that you have to uh, uh, control. Okay, we are not going to have that tip off until a couple of more minutes. Sort of lean back, relax. Rick, you're relaxed up there, aren't you? all day long and we're certainly enjoying the stay up here so the talking is done time for the walk and somebody's going to win the class a state crown stay with us we'll be right back one of your network sponsors is true value hardware of course it's championship day for the players and teams out here we mentioned earlier for the officials as well also championships of some very, very special people. One of them, Holly Lopez from Grand Ledge High School. She'll have the honor, as did earlier Amy Elder and Angie Miser, as she will sing the national anthem. And just prior to that, let's go down to Eric Verseth, the public address announcer for the introduction of the starting lineups and, of course, the national anthem singer. Of Grand Ledge High School, I invite you to join her in singing our national anthem. Holly? Good evening, the Michigan High School Athletic Association welcomes you to the Palace of Auburn Hills for this evening's championship game in the 1990 Class A Boys Basketball Tournament. As you watch this game, remember that high school athletic events are a classroom by themselves, a classroom where ethics, integrity, and respect are key elements to learning regardless of the final score. Remember, good sports are winners. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for this evening's game between the prospectors of Detroit Southwestern and 
the Trojans of Saginaw High. Starting for Southwestern at one forward, 6'4", senior, 41, Garland Mance. For Saginaw at forward, 6'3", senior, 40, Derek Smith. At the other forward for Southwestern, 6'7", junior, number 42, Jalen Rose. For the Trojans of Saginaw at forward, 6'7", junior, 42, Jesse Green. At center for Southwestern, 6'3", junior, number 14, Bashan Leonard. At center for Saginaw, 6'4", junior, number 50, Nate Symington. At guard for the Prospectors, 5'11", senior, number 3, Orlando Milton. At guard for Saginaw, 6'1", junior, number 10, Daniel West. At the other guard for Southwestern, 6'2", senior, 24, Howard Isley. For Saginaw, 6'0", senior, number 12 at guard, Marcus Buckley. Detroit Southwestern, the Prospectors, coached by Perry Watson. Saginaw, the Trojans, by Marshall O'Thomas. Your official for this evening's game are Hugh Jewell and Don Vogt. Alternate official, Bill Newhouse. The officials for tonight's game, Hugh Jewell, Don Vogt, Dearborn Heights. The alternate, Bill Newhouse out of Charlotte, out of Charlotte, Michigan. And let's see what develops in this one. Glad to have you along. This is for the Class A Championship, the high school championship from Palace. In Auburn Hills, Michigan, Class B won by Detroit Country Day, Class D, East Catholic out of Detroit, and Saginaw Novell Catholic Central winning the Class C title. Game balls for today's game have been provided by Rollins Sporting Goods and Wilson Sporting Goods. We're going to get into injury factor here in a few minutes. We want to talk about that Elton Carter who is missing from the starting lineup and is through for the season, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Saginaw, Trojan in the white uniform. And that represents the home team here at the Palace tonight. Black and gold, the team colors. Prospectors in that navy blue and gold trim. And we're just underway. Glad you could join us. And away we go as we open up with a three-point shot from Marcus Buckley, leading off where he finished yesterday. Saginaw, they will play a tough man-to-man -man defense. They like to get up and play the passing lanes. Buckley is a player that will have to be aware of his presence at all times. He has three-point range as good as anyone in the state. And quickly they come down a four-on-one. Daniel West lays it up for two. Five-nothing. Trojans getting off to a quick start. No matter where you are in this great state of Michigan tonight, we're glad you could join us. And the prospectors get on the board as Milton hits for two. Orlando Milton started a three-guard offense for Southwestern with their big center, Elvin Carter, going down yesterday. That may turn out to be a stress fracture, but he is gone. Carter, his 12 points, his 10 rebounds will be sorely missed, but when you have as much depth as Southwestern, sometimes you can overcome injuries like that to keep people. Buckley going for the long ball, couldn't hit on it, and rebounded by the prospectors of Detroit Southwest. Isley, number 24, they move it around, and once again, putting it up, the long shot as Milton will not get it, but the rebound is handled, and Rose puts it in, his first two. One of the people we talked about in the open, Rose, the leading scorer, Tell you one thing, he's tough on the inside, has to be blocked out, but he also can shoot the three as well. Knocked down several yesterday versus Detroit Northern. 
tenacious defense put on by the prospect. There's contact made, and the foul is committed by number 24, Howard Isley, so the first foul of the game. You see the drive there. Derek Smith. Foul called on Isley, as you indicated. But I tell you, you can feel the electricity in here as both these teams are hungry for a title. Southwestern last one there. State Class A Championship in 1973. Saginaw has been an even longer drought, 1962. Tradition, it's been a winning tradition at both of these schools over the years. But getting to the winner's circle, the final team has been a little bit of a problem for both of these schools, as Greg told you. Collapsing that time and making the steal was Rose. Feed Rose in the paint, puts it up, while Gull tries for his own rebound. Scramble, loose ball, picked up by Saginaw. Nice move by Derek Smith. Three on two, coming down. The lane, he put it up, Daniel West. Well, they can run the basketball up the court, and I tell you, they do a very good job of getting the ball in the middle, filling the lanes, giving the guard with the ball in the middle more than one option. Trying to bank it off the glass and couldn't get it up there. Height paying off that time for the ball. Rose puts it up, draws the foul, can't get the basket. Jalen Rose in there at 6'7", 185 pounder. He's an 11th grader. Loves to drive, loves to go to the baseline and drive. Leads a team in block shots, leads the prospectors in steals, and can do the job from the three-point range. A left-handed shooter. He's a busy, busy player out on the court. Yesterday, in East Lansing versus Battle Creek Central, Saginaw had a real big lead in that game. Late in the game, Battle Creek was able to get back in it because they pressed and they also went to the offensive glass with great determination. Now, if uh, Saginaw is not going to do a good job uh, defensively rebounding in this game, it's going to be a long night for him because Southwestern goes to the boards awfully hard. Gonna have to do it, gonna have to block him out. And Rose goes two for two for the line. He's got four points also to match his four rebounds at the early stages of this championship game. We've had basketball, the high school variety all day long. Hope that you joined it on your favorite station across the state. And this is for the Marbles, the championship in Class A tonight. Hope you were with us this morning when we got underway for the Class B affair. That started at 10.30, came back your way at 2 o'clock with Class D, and then followed by the second game of the doubleheader, Class C. They packed in 20,501 for the afternoon doubleheader after a morning attendance figure of 19,186. Rose coming down with his fifth rebound. Doing a big job on the defensive boards. Got to with Carter out of there with that uh, foot injury. Little loop pass to Rose. Nice pick and goes. Beat his man that time, got around Derek Smith. He's doing the job inside, but I guarantee you before this game is over, he'll show you how good he is from the outside. The complete basketball player, fine player, the junior for the Southwestern prospectors, Jalen Rose. Southwestern has gone on top of that last basket, eight to seven. Almost traveling, almost called. Had the whistle up there, but uh, Buckley did not get the whistle for Saginaw. Symington, number 50, moves down in the low area. Long shot, misses everything, just got a piece of the glass and hauled on by the prospectors. That was Vashon Lunner that came down with it. And riding underneath and putting it up, basketball count, made by Marlon Mance. Good, quick pass underneath. See the way they exploded the basketball up court. Just tremendous penetration that time on the part of Orlando Milton and a nice drop off down low to Garland Mance. Mance goes six feet four, 200 pounds. He's real strong, so when he gets it on the inside, you see the drop here. Excuse me, that drop came from Isley. Mance gets the foul and the bucket. When he gets it on the inside, it's gonna be very tough to knock it out of his hands with a, with a simple swipe. And Mance completes the play, the foul. Went to Derek Smith. And traveling is called on the Trojans. And again, it was Derek Smith that time. Substitution that just came in moments ago. Marcus Warman comes in for the prospectors of Southwestern. He's wearing uniform number 12. He's the type of guy that makes things happen in a hurry. So does this guy with the ball, Rose. 
Watch to put it up, puts it up, off the yard. No good. Three prospectors there for the rebound. It bounces into the hands of Smith. 11 to 7, 3.07 to go in the first quarter. Southwestern leading Saginaw. Saginaw with three representatives in the high school championships today. One a winner, one a loser. And we'll see who develops here in this with this third team representing Saginaw. High above the rim and going for the rebound. And brought down by Vashon Leonard. Number 14 had him. He wanted to go for three points. Drives the baseline. Offensive foul. Charging his call. Position was set up. That time by Nate Semington, who slid over and had possession as far as the territory he was covering. Both teams are well coached in that aspect of the game, too. You see the penetration there, but they all gravitate to the ball very well. They get in, they establish their position, and they're not afraid to take a, a, a blow like that and, and get the offensive charge. Leonard picks up the first personal foul. Field goal department, four for nine, three for seven for Saginaw. And as a result, Southwestern leading 11 to 7. There's the time remaining in the first quarter, 2.28. Long shot from the corner will not go as Jesse Drain let go and couldn't hit. Jesse, who came into the night's game averaging 17.9 from the field and 14 rebounds per game. It still belongs to Saginaw. Inbound pass coming in. His coach. Marshall Thomas said he'd like to see Drain shoot more. He's a very good shooter. Sometimes he's too unselfish out on the court. Uh, he's shot a couple in this game, has not scored yet, but he will have to have a decent game in order for Saginaw to have a chance of winning. Buckley trying to get the offense going here with two minutes and seven seconds remaining. They set it up again. And looking for a little bit of help from Daniel West. Good patience on the part of Saginaw. Down just four. They've got to keep the score close, of course. Uh, I mentioned a lot of the scores involving Southwestern this year have not been close. I mean, they have just murdered teams. They've had maybe three or four close games. Turn around, John, from about 12 feet out. Would not drop that time as Jesse Drain put it up and couldn't do it and whistled underneath. And a foul is going to be called on Derek Smith. That's his second. Third team foul on the Trojans of Saginaw. Again, nothing's happening in the scoring column here in the last minute, minute and 39, 11 to 7. And Saginaw's hit uh, one of their last seven on the field goal department. Marcus Wilman in there. Puts it up and won't go. It's Milton that took the shot. Basket, I believe, is going to count. Yes, it does. And a whistle sounds. Basket is good. That's Mance yeah. on the inside again, rebounding. You see the shot up by Milton. It's off, but Mance getting good position. The long rebound takes this knock across the hand. Too strong for that. This guy averages eight rebounds a game to go along with this 14 points. Pretty consistent ball player. Foul is called Kareem Hammond, who checked in a couple of moments ago. Very muscular type of basketball player, and the free throw is good. So give him now a total of six points, and a substitution coming in now for the prospectors. Saginaw's done a good job of handling this press. They have not had a. Well, I was about to speak too soon. Mike Hamilton was that substitute came in for Southwestern. And the prospectors on a 14 to 2 run right now. The left hand goes up and the ball goes down to shoot. And two that time for Johnny Hayes. So on a ninth, or rather on a 16 to 2 run, we've got a timeout. 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Southwestern leading by a tune of 16 to 7. We'll be right back. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Here's the offensive rebounding strength of Southwestern demonstrated this time by Danny Hayes. He slips inside, goes six foot three, 170 pounds, but no blockout. Hey, it's easy. 
Well, they made it look easy. Southwestern final round nine seasons overall 16 times in their history as you mentioned it's been a long time since they've been able to to say we are champions of the state 1400 the enrollment blue and gold for Tolga, and the public high school league of uh, the city of Detroit. 1138 students enrolled at Saginaw High black and gold the home uniform tonight they're in the white uniform. Members of the Saginaw Valley. That's been a competitive league for years. One of the strong leagues. Saginaw, second straight year, coming into the finals, 18th overall appearance, and as you mentioned, state titles from 42 and 62, and the door's been barred since that time. And when you talk about Saginaw and their basketball strength, if you weren't with us for the earlier games, this is just the well, it's the third Saginaw team that's been in this uh, in the championship final. Jesse Drain had the ball taken out of his hands cleanly. No whistle. Then we get a whistle once they cross the uh, timeline. Traveling called. Daniel West in possession. Second quarter. Just underway. Or rather, it will be getting underway. First quarter coming down to the 15 second mark. Southwest is showing a zone for the remainder of this quarter. Coming down to six seconds, five seconds. They got to look at the hoop. I don't think they're going to get a shot off. So Good night. Great defense. Great defense by Southwestern. And, and poor recognition, I might add, by Saginaw. They never knew the game clock. Not too shabby. 16 to 7, Southwestern Lady. We'll be back after this word from our local sponsors. This is the MHS AA Championship Network. One quarter of basketball completed in the Class A final. Detroit Southwestern leads Saginaw 16 to 7. Back up at Suite 147. This is Rick Berkey with a very special guest, Mick McCabe of the Detroit Free Press, the son of Swami himself. You've read his followings. Before we get to you, Mick, though, the nickname comes, of course, from the late Hal Schramm. Uh, your name's synonymous with high school sports, but Hal Schramm's name, of course, a legend in high school sports. Oh, no question. Uh, a legend at the Free Press, a legend in the Michigan. That's why he was voted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. Your predictions throughout the year in football and high school start out a quarter just for fun, but you've had some interesting twists, and, and you've really gotten to know some of the people in different cities because of your predictions. Yeah, the people in DeWitt, I mean DeWitt, are real happy with me, and uh, the people in Martin, uh, you know, they, I have a lot of good buddies there, too. Seriously, though, you do get to meet these people, actually, and, and, and everybody understands that uh, predictions are just what they are for fun. Yeah, at, at first, people get upset a lot, but then after a while, they realize, hey, this is kind of fun, and the people in DeWitt really had a lot of fun with it, and so did I. Quickly, Mick, uh, your reactions to the games today? Hey, uh, you know, Saginaw is a really good team, but they're going to have to score again if they're going to win this game. I mean, it's been five minutes since they've scored. Um, this should be the year Southwestern wins up. Mick, keep up the good work at the Free Press. You too, Rick. Now back course side again. Okay, Rick, thank you very much. And Nick, nice to see you again. And the prospectors just uh, seeing what they can do as far as the rebounding and put it up. And Garland Mance puts it up about the fourth effort. And the prospectors go up in front 18 to 7. And if you're not going to rebound, then you better be shot from the field and hit most of your shots. Absolutely. Southwestern enjoying a 10 to 2 rebounding edge in that first quarter, and they seem to have not let up. Saginaw trying to get something going. Instead, they lose the ball on the turnover. Isley going in, lays it up, can't get it. Chipped in by Jenna Rose. So Rose with eight points. You really can't fault the defense of Saginaw, at least until the. Uh, the shot goes up and then they do a poor job of blocking out something I saw in the fourth quarter versus Battle Creek Central yesterday and I knew that if they didn't do a better job today it was going to be very very difficult for them to win. They have got to make some type of adjustments rebounding wise. Rose with six rebounds. It's been a long time coming but Saginaw hits and Buckley does the job. The adjustment they've got to make they've got to each Pick a man, get to that man, box him out, put a body on him. They got to do a better job of blocking out our, our, on the defensive end. Well, Buckley has taken a couple of shots, and he has two three-point shots to his credit. The other two uh, baskets by Daniel West. That's it. 
Southwestern of Detroit up by 10, 20 to 10. Quick pass just to the right of the lane. Gets his own rebound. And coming through is Mance. Mance showing a little quickness and determination, I might add. Southwestern rebounding department, no contest right now, 15 to three. The result is that score. Here we are in the first half at 5.23 to go. Southwestern back in a man-to-man -man now. I tell you, they're changing defenses. I believe it's confusing Saginaw for the most part. They come down, they're running offense versus a zone, a man-to-man -man offense versus a zone, and then when the Southwestern drops back into a man-to-man, -man, they're, they're running the wrong offense. They've got to get better recognition when they come down the court offensively. Puts it up and hits in a hurry. 24-10, not wasted any time. Substitution now for Southwestern to check it in. Orlando Milton returns to the lineup. And a little break for Mance right now. He'll get a little breather. Pressure applied right now by Southwestern. No problem for Saginaw, but the question is, can they get somebody to get the shot away and be successful with it? There's your answer. Kareem Hammond gets his first two. The fellow we were talking about with the 18 points or 17 points in 18 minutes in the semifinal game. He was a big factor in that victory yesterday for Saginaw. They need to continue looking for Hammond, too, until they can spring Jesse Drain for some shot attempts. They've got to have other people filling in, and there's Drain still unable to find the mark. Has not been able to open it up yet as far as showing any point production. Just getting a piece of the hand as Marcus Buckley comes in there and picks up his first personal foul. That'll be the 15th foul. And going to the line is Isley. Howard Isley averages about 11 points per game. Will come down with three uh, rebounds. A six uh, foot two senior, 160 pounder. has his first point. Substitution now as Mance comes back into the lineup. Worman comes back in for Southwestern. And a look at that, that prospector bench. Everything going their way right now. You talk about having depth and being tough to defend. Southwestern, they send, or at least uh, they have six players on their team that average in double figures, it really, really, as I said in the open, makes it difficult to key on any one person. You really have to play honest defense, and everyone has to come up with a solid defensive effort, and few teams have been able to do that consistently on the year against Southwestern. All right, so hitting on that shot, so give him the three points, and a foul is called, this time on Rose of Detroit, Southwestern. Official MHSAA Boys Basketball Final T-shirts and sweatshirts by Russell Athletic are great keepsake. 100% cotton T-shirts are only $8. And heavyweight sweatshirts, $18. For mail orders, include $250 for postage and handling to Spirit. 1920 West Saginaw, Lansing 48915. Or call area code 517-484-1107. You're going to like it. Some good buys there. Good looking. On the rebound, going back up, Daniel West. So West has his first two of the second quarter. 26-14, Detroit Southwestern leading Saginaw. Loop pass underneath. And a nice play by Rose. He can't make it, but he drags the arm of somebody, and a foul is called on Saginaw. Southwestern showing their versatility, throwing the lob over the top to Rose, and they're throwing it right over the top of Jesse Drain, who himself is a fine leaper. And Rose, rarely will you block his uh, shot inside. When he gets the ball that low, you're going to have to foul him to stop him. Hammond picks up the foul, Kareem Hammond. His second personal foul. Saginaw has brought in Julian Taylor, number 14. Goes concentrating. Right, 
There's the pressure again by Southwestern. And there's Rose right making the, the kickoff. Yeah, and how on a quick pass oh. underneath. Nance tries to get to it, can't do it. A little turnaround jumper won't go for Saginaw. Had about four opportunities, couldn't capitalize on it. And they go right back on a tenacious defense, though. I was about to say, how about this? They're going to press after the missed uh, field, field goal attempt. But they drop back into a zone defense. Saginaw looking underneath. They have got Jesse Drain just tied up. Double team on him. Shut him down right now. And off the foot, Buckley wanted to drive towards the baseline, dribbled off the foot and out of bounds and turns it over. South, Southwestern's just the more aggressive team right now. Really, really, really playing tough. Hard nose, defense, aggressive offensively, and very, very tough on the offensive rebound. Seven turnovers by the Trojans. Southwestern turned it over four times. Drain got in there that time, got up and got a nice rebound, and he's just going to have to be willing to mix it up in there the rest of this game. Might get hit in the head, might get some bumps and bruises, but hey, this is the state championship. You got to give it what, uh, give it your everything. I got to have him, no doubt about it. Three-point shot that Marcus Buckley hits on. He's gone to the well three times and made three of them. Three points. Here's Rose, left-hand shot, his favorite little jumper, partially blocked that time by Drain. Long pass, nobody's there. Looking for the fast break, and nobody's there, and calmly going back to get it for second, or rather for the prospectors, Marcus Wormann. If this had been hockey, they probably would have been called for icing. <laughs> Rose puts it up, fair ball, let's go. That was Hammond that came down with it for Saginaw. Trojans trying to get something clicking here. One, well shot, one shot for Saginaw, and when Jesse Drain, when he gets the ball now inside, he's so used to having so much pressure on him, he's not even turning looking at the basket. He's kicking it back out to the perimeter immediately. That was Rose that came down with the rebound. And nothing to it. Woman. Loads it up and hits. One minute remaining in the first half by Detroit Southwestern. Out to a 30 to 17 lead. Rebound department, three to one. As far as that, 21 to seven. Rose called for the foul, a shooting infraction. So Rose will pick up his first personal foul. Leonard gets called for the foul, and not Rose. Take it off and give it uh, Leonard. Daniel West will take a couple of punks at it. The first one, yes. Hey, if you're interested in helping youngsters grow, you can become involved in high school sports as a game official. Pick up a whistle. The kids need you. To become a registered official, contact the Michigan High School Athletic Association. 1019 Trove Ridge Road, East Lansing, Michigan, 48823. You saw that graphic on West. Averages 12 points a game. Two yeah. rebounds. And he got those free throws to go. He's got eight points here in the first half. We're down to 45 seconds remaining in the first half. And Southwestern will just slow it right down to a grinding halt. May want to play for one. Lady 30 to 19 and down to 33 seconds. Well disciplined team. Trojans trying to force uh, the prospectors out of something. They're having no part of it and down to 15 seconds. Remaining in the first half. Tried to quick No go, and a foul called underneath. All that was was a loose ball and a scramble for it. Diving for it for Saginaw was Marcus Buckley, and the foul will go against Donnie Hay Danny Hayes. That foul by Hayes may have saved a fast break. As you see, on the penetration, the ball comes loose. Break for Saginaw. They go to the free throw line. Here's Rose checking back in. 
Danny Rose. Hayes have committed that foul going back in and he's getting a little bit of a lecture. And Rose coming back in for offense. They'll have nine seconds coming back with Southwestern. They'll look to get it in the hands of Rose uh, once they cross half court. Keep in mind he can nail the three pointer. Yes and how. Marcus Buckley. No, won't go. And who got the rebound? Rose. Quick pass down. Going right to the bucket, but couldn't hit. A long pass down. Misses everything. And the half ends and traveling is called. We got what? One second left on it. One and nine tenths. Certainly enough time to get a, a decent shot attempt. You better believe Southwestern, they'll give it their all, too. And they didn't cover Rose. Well, Rose tried it from the outside. That's the first time he's hit shot from the distance. Had no luck. A half has come to an end. And the score reading Detroit Southwestern 30, Saginaw 19. We'll be back after this word from our local sponsors. This is the MHS AA Championship Network. The Michigan High School Athletic Association Championship State Finals are brought to you by Denny's, the Michigan High School Training Table, Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award, and True Value Hardware Stores, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Are Winners program. Welcome. Welcome back to the Palace of Auburn Hills. I'm Rick Berkey in the Class A Boys Basketball Finals at the half where Detroit Southwestern leads Saginaw 30 to 19. At the half for tonight's game, we'll have the Forsyth Award, an annual tradition at the finals. Also a chat with Jack Roberts, the executive director of the MHSAA. That and more, look at stats as well. We'll be right back after this message from Dennis. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we direct your attention to center court, where Eric Federici, Athletic director at Trenton High School and member of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Representative Council will make a special presentation. The Charles E. Forsyth Award is presented annually by the Michigan High School Athletic Association to individuals who have achieved excellence in service to the interscholastic community. More information about the award and this year's honorees may be found on page 79 of your souvenir program. We are pleased to present this year's recipients. The first recipient is Webster Morrison of Pickford. In his career at Pickford High School, Mr. Morrison directed his track teams to a record 25 consecutive Michigan High School Athletic Association Peninsula Championships. He has also coached several other teams and won over 72% of his contests in his career. He also served as athletic director principal and superintendent at Pickford. The Michigan High School Athletic Association is pleased to present the Forsyth Award to Webster Morrison of Pickford. The second recipient is Herbert Quaid of Benton Harbor. Mr. Quaid served as coach and administrator for 39 years, including 20 at Benton Harbor. He played on a state championship basketball team at Benton Harbor, St. John, and coached at Hartford before moving back to Benton Harbor in 59, where he enjoyed a distinguished career as an athletic director and Michigan High School Athletic Association registered game official. The Michigan High School Athletic Association is pleased to present the Forsyth Award to Herbert Quaid of Benton Harbor. Congratulations to Webster Morrison and Herbert Quaid, recipients of the 1990 Charles Forsyth Award. And thank you very much, Mr. Federico. Congratulations to all involved, two very, very deserving recipients. Right now, special treat again with us, Jack Roberts, the executive director of the MHSAA, joins us up in Suite 147. Jack, it's a basketball day, but big news yesterday, the number of teams playing in the football finals, play, or the football playoff doubled, and you've gone from four state champions to eight. That's right, the representative council responding to the desire of many schools to 
allow more schools to qualify, particularly more smaller schools, have uh, doubled the number of qualifiers in each of our four uh, classes so that we'll have double A and A, double B and B, double C and C, and double D and D. And what is really special about the proposal is that the smaller half of each of those classes does not have to compete against the larger half either in qualifying for the playoffs or competing for the championships. So we'll have twice as many qualifiers and twice as many champions without lengthening the season at all. First year of the basketball finals at the Palace, how's it gone? It's gone very well. The Palace people have been terrific in responding very promptly to all the little things that go wrong on the first day that you're somewhere, but we're very pleased with the attendance and the reception of people here. There's always areas of concern from your standpoint. What are the specific concerns statewide and nationally as you see it right now? I think uh, here and, and nationally the concerns will always be sportsmanship, safety, uh, scholarship, and, and the scope of our programs, keeping them in perspective, uh, reminding people that this is educational athletics far more than it is entertainment athletics. One thing that's good about the folks getting a chance to see the finals, though, we've already going to set a new record. Over 10,000 more people will get a chance to see a part of everything involved with that. Jack, keep up the good work. Glad you could join us. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Okay, again, at uh, the half, it's Detroit Southwestern 30 and Saginaw 19. The Detroit Southwestern Prospectors up by 11 at the half. They can almost taste the Class A state championship. Don't count Saginaw out yet. A couple guys right in tune with both sides of the court. Of course, Ray and Greg with some first half stats and analysis. Okay, Rick, thank you very much. Interesting interview there at the head of the uh, halftime, but uh, you gotta produce some points from your frontline players, your two forwards and your center. So far, Saginaw hasn't got one point from the three guys up front. You've also you've got to get some balance uh, offensively. You're correct, inside and outside. But you've also got to rebound the basketball. Southwestern is not doing. Excuse me, Saginaw is not doing a good job of that. Now, when we look at our statistics, you'll see that Saginaw is shooting a better percentage from the field. But when you look at the rebounding disparity, it'll be it'll come as no surprise that uh, Southwestern is leading this game and leading it by 11. Yeah, if you don't hit on that shot, you're not going to get a second chance at it. Look at the rebounding stat. We'll go down five numbers, 22 to nine, and many of those rebounds, offensive putbacks. Southwestern shooting 39 percent, certainly not setting the world on fire. But excuse me, uh, Trojans, uh, second all that is shooting 39 percent, Southwestern 35. But again, it's the rebounding. We can't harp on that enough. Keep in mind, Saginaw, they've not come out of the locker room yet, and we've got 2.30 to go before the game starts again. I'm sure they're in there constantly beating on, hey, fellas, we have got to rebound. Well, I'll tell you, 31 shots taken by the prospectors, and leading the way, no surprise here, is Jalen Rose. Nance doing a fine job, too. His 10 points, a lot of those came off of offensive rebound putbacks. And a little balanced scoring with three fellows chipping in with two apiece. Buckley, a guy from outside, has put it up three times a three-point range, and he's hit for nine points. Weston Hammond also, but guys on the perimeter, as we said, got to get a little better of a mix. Saginaw still has not come out on the floor, and there's no signs of them in the tunnel as well. Here's a fellow. We'll go back to 1973, Bob Whitehouse. And that's the last time that Saginaw won the Class A state championship. Beat Saginaw, by the way, that uh, in that game, 66 to 60. Robert, you're looking pretty good, kid. Got out of the wars a little bit, but the last time the prospectors uh, went for the crowd. I remember that game, too. Teammate of mine at Michigan State, Bob Chapman. He was our captain at Michigan State, played on that Saginaw team. Sag Southwestern, you have to give them some credit doing a fine job and Carter their starting center injured yesterday and you mentioned may have a stress factor of the ankle 12 points 10 rebounds you knew they were going to miss that but still a lot of players have stepped up and done a fine job all right we'll be right back to the palace here and in a southwestern leading Saginaw after the first half 30 to 19 we'll be back after this word from the local sponsors this is the MHSAA championship network what's he going to have to do with his Trojans He's got to get those guys to rebound. He's got to get them to block out. Of course, 
I would expect that Jesse Drain, who went scoreless in that first half, is going to have to get active with the basketball. They've got to find a way to spring him a loose. He's averaging 17 points a game, and they need some of that production. It's a lot to ask of your front court people to, excuse me, your back court people to carry you in a game of this magnitude against a team like Southwestern. You've got to have some all around uh, uh, spreading out of the scoring. Well, a little bit of a different lineup for Saginaw as they start the second half. Julian Taylor, number 14, will inbound it. And Marcus Buckley is in there. Kareem Hammond stays in there on a starting assignment. So we'll see what the Trojans can get underway here. And they go for the long ball out of the way and putting it up was Marcus Buckley. So Marcus with nine points, all three point efforts in the first half, starts it off in the second half and starts it off the way we started this game. Blocked that time, trying to go through a bunch of defenders with Leonard, had the ball stripped from himself. A nice move, but Leonard comes down and obliges, does the same thing to Buckley. Three on one coming back. And coming back was Mance, who had a little determination that time. He really did. Gave you a, a good shot of his ball handling ability that time as he went behind the back, freed himself for the layup. I think that at halftime, perhaps Saginaw's coaching staff challenged this player to come out. He said probably, hey, fellas, if we're going to lose this thing. Let's lose playing hard, playing aggressive. In the first half, we were not assertive. We let them push us around, and it looks like that's the way they've come out. At least they're working harder. They're being more physical. I'm noticing that early with Saginaw. Hey, by the way, good sports are winners. Being a good sport is more than standing up and cheering for your team. It's knowing when to cheer and what the appropriate cheer is. And they will cheer on that one. Rose hitting on that one for his first two of the second half. Stripped right out of the hands of the pass. And going in the paint and driving, it's good. They're going to get a timeout. Yeah, Howard Easley takes care of that one. Easley, that is, driving all the way. And with the score right now, Southwestern 36, Saginaw 22. We'll be right back. First, here's a word from one of our network sponsors, True Value. Hey, we were talking about good sports or winners, of course they are. It's knowing when to cheer, what the appropriate cheer is. At selected MHSAA tournaments, good sports are winners. Awards ranging from certificates to crystal trophies and $1,000 contributions from True Value hardware, uh, hardware, that is, will be presented to teams, coaches, cheerleaders, or fans. Remember, good sports make everyone a winner, and certainly one of the good sports has to be True Value hardware helping out to make those presentations. Look at that offensive rebounding oh. stat there. Detroit Southwestern 12, and I would venture to say they probably put 10 of them back in for baskets. Saginaw just one offensive rebound in the game. It'll belong to Saginaw, I believe. Carrying that ball out of bounds, Howard Isley had come down with it and then could not stay in bounds. So Saginaw really finding itself on the short end the rebounding department tonight, and I believe on the turnover department. Rose rejects it. Thank you very much. And the long shot that time taken by Buckley would not go down for him, and a foul is called. And moving in, trying to pick up the ball off the floor, making contact. The foul goes to Milton. That'll send Drain to the line. And Finally, he'll be able to get on the scorebook, possibly by knocking down a free throw. That's just the second offensive rebound in the game for Saginaw. You join the slate. This is a young man that has a 17.9 average per game. He just recorded his first point of the ball game. Also might indicate that he's averaging 14 rebounds a game, Jesse Drink. But he hasn't had his hands on the ball very much in this game. Well, they've kept him pretty busy, especially when he's been on offense, double teamed him a little bit. Zone defense now by Saginaw. 
keep an eye on the prospectors, see if they want to shoot over that. No, they get a guy down low, just off to the right there, on the baseline, and that was Vance, and uh, just got it. Nobody came out to meet him and put it up and scored two in a hurry. 38-23, Detroit Southwestern. Gets his own rebound this time. Will not go down for him, having all kinds of problems. Boy, he looks like he's in pain, and that is because the shots will not drop for him. We're talking about Jesse's race. Uh, did you see that pass? I mean, he sent that through a needle hole with English on it, no less, oh, and completed and the pass. Traveling called on the prospectors. Daniel West in possession. Feeling a little pressure, trapped, double team, looking for somebody open. Loses the ball. And traveling called down there. I'll tell you what, great defensive work that time by the youngster doing a job, Orlando Milk. A uh, senior, 5'11", 155 pounder, but called for travel. So Saginaw will try it again. Jack says, keep running it till you get it right. <laughs> Big assignment tonight, Jesse Drain. He hasn't drained many tonight. No, he hasn't. Tell you, it's a moral victory for him just to get his hands on the ball and his... Uh, area of effectiveness. Now you can keep an eye on those uh, dark blue and gold uniforms collapsing on the weak side on Drain, the guy in the middle. And traveling this call on the dribble that time. Daniel West going to the basket. But called for travel. Substitution now coming in for Detroit Southwestern. And this is Marcus Warman coming back in, number 12. And sitting down for the prospectors, Orlando Milton. 4.39 to go in the third quarter. Southwestern of Detroit leading Saginaw Trojans 38-23. This is a Class A boys high school championship basketball game. Class A. Being played in the past. Rose trying to do everything he could to put it in. He draws the foul but takes a little physical punishment. Rose, 6'7", 180-pound junior. Looks deceptively... Uh, his body, that is, with his bill, he's deceptively strong. I mean, wiry, when he gets his hands on the ball, he can be very tough with it, goes up in a crowd, takes the contact, usually comes away with a three-point opportunity. This time, he'll go to the line for two shots. Danny Hayes, number 20, checks in for Southwestern. The foul was called on Jesse Drain. This is Rose at the line. And to go with uh, his performance on the offense tonight, as we talked about what he had done on the offensive boards and defensive boards, give him a total of 10 off the glass, cleaning that with the Windex tonight. And Drain, he doesn't sneak in on people. They know coming in that they've got to do a job with him. They know that they have to be physical, yet when it's all said and done, he still has his 17 points, his eight or nine rebounds in this game. He already has 10. Pass goes astray. The prospects uh, pull off the theft and then miss the shot, but double teaming underneath that time and feeling the pressure finally. They spot a guy in the way of Drain, who then has a teammate coming there who misses it. And that ball bounces off the court and back underneath the backboard. It'll belong to the prospectors. You want to talk about the effectiveness of Southwestern's press, even when they don't get the turnover. Their pressure so disorients Saginaw that when they finally go with the shot attempt, it's a rush uh, shot attempt. It uh, has a very low percentage, that is, chance-wise of going in. Greg Kelser, uh, Saginaw has 13 turnovers. Southwestern Heaven has converted only seven points off of those turnovers, or else we would be having more points separated between Southwestern and Saginaw than we do right now. 39-23. Substitution, prospectors bringing back in. Quincy Bowens. Uh, this is Quincy's first appearance in the game, so now bringing him back in. He gets his first taste under fire. He's number 10. Marcus Buckley. Try to shake something loose. Bounce pass going into drain. He comes back out to Buckley. Intercepted. Fast break coming down and traveling this call on the youngster that just checked in moments ago, Marcus no Warren. On the so again, you'll watch the prospectors just apply the pressure here on defense. Well, when you look at Perry Watson over there, you know that he's not relaxed. He knows that this thing can turn around very, very quickly. 
So therefore, he wants his team to continue to execu execute sharply and uh, take care of the basketball. Turnaround jumper. It is good. And nailed by Kareem Hammond. And a foul is called. Hammond will try to complete the three-point play. By Kareem Hammond, number 34, Hammond, a 6-3 forward. They finally get something going in on the inside. We've not seen a lot of that tonight from Saginaw, but it's something that I really, really feel they've got to continue. They look finally comfortable yeah. getting a shot attempt up. Mance is checked back in for Southwestern. Meanwhile, at the line to convert into the three-point play is Hammond. And now down 13. And really, I think the Saginaw, they've got to feel pretty good about this because they played poorly enough, as you mentioned a moment ago, to be down by way more than 13. Pass is stolen. Buckley drives in, lays it up. Yes. Marcus Buckley has his fifth field goal tonight, but only one worth two points. Everything else has been the three-point range. They got it down to 11, and it looks to have sparked them defensively as Rose going over the green that time. There's a good answer, man, for you. A guy that can silence the crowd very quickly. You get it into Jalen Rose, boy, I tell you, he can be very effective, and there's a turnover. That went all the way back into the uh, paying customers there. 227 remaining in the third quarter. Saginaw trailing Southwestern 41-28. Foul will be called, reaching in that time. Daniel West picks up his first personal. Calling the second team foul on Saginaw here in the second half. You had a quick look there at Perry Watson, who says, yeah, I know what it's like to be a bridesmaid, but I'm going to tell you what, the one that counts is the one tonight in his 12th year at Southwestern. Just can't seem to get a break. And getting that one shot and nothing to come down on the boards with if you miss that shot. The story as far as Saginaw so far in this game. Plenty of time. Rose puts it up. Won't go too strong. Called down by Buckley. Fast break is coming back. Reaching in, maybe might have been Rose. A call of a shooting foul, and Rose will pick up the foul. Saginaw now, they're getting the long rebound. We're going back in, helping out on the boards just a bit. It ignites their fast break. And that time, Rose getting the foul, reaching in on Buckley. Vashon Leonard and Orlando Milton checking in. Buckley at the line. 142 remaining in the third quarter. Nice to have you along. A telecast coming from the Palace at Auburn Hills, Michigan. Of course, for the first time, the state high school championships have been played here. What a wonderful idea. What great crowds we've had this morning, this afternoon, and our official tenants for tonight has not been announced as yet. But hey, like you said, we had 19,000, over 19,000 for that game. 10.30 this 10 morning. 30 in the morning. A lot of people getting up, coming around. I says, I like my round ball in the AM. Country Day, of course, winning that 10-30 game. Buckley at the free throw line, hitting on one of those. Rose out of the way, in from behind. Rose, a little surprise that Julian Taylor could do that. The 11th grader comes through and does a job. Well, he got it from behind, and that takes great timing as he was able to slap it, get all ball, good luck. Won't go for Milton. A rebounded by the Trojans. Nice pick that time. And Derek Smith puts it up for two. His first two. And they've got it to within 10. This is the closest it's been in quite some while. 41-31 prospectors leading the Trojans. Detroit Southwestern against Saginaw High. 
Rebound handled by the prospect. This big basket that time. Hunter just looked as if maybe things were starting to go the other way. Every time that looks that way, too. Southwestern has an answer. A moment ago, it was Rose. That time they got it via the offensive rebound right. Jordan Taylor gets a nice screen on the wall. He knows what to do with it. The big guy, Green, had given the screen, and Taylor conks it for three. His first points of the evening. And now Saginaw's crowd is starting to come alive, and Saginaw looks like they're playing with a lot more confidence. 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Southwestern leading 43-34. Driving underneath, putting it up, finger to tip control is Isley. They've got to have someone rotating over to take that charge on that play. Never should a man have, be able to drive from the front court all the way in for a layup. Isley with eight points. Southwestern checks in Terrence McMillan now, number 32, going to the bench. Jesse, or rather, uh, let's check it out. Coming in is, uh, is Rose. Stays in the lineup. Five seconds. They're not going to get a shot off. Prospectors may get one. Yes! Kenzie Bowen got the ball, knew how much time was there, put it up and hit for two. Just as the third quarter came to a close. Oh, that hurts if you're a Saginaw fan. Southwestern 47, Saginaw 34. And the crowd's getting all set for the final quarter of play here. We'll be back after this word from our local sponsors. This is the MHSAA Championship Network. Just moments ago, you had mentioned the fact, Gregory Kelsey, you didn't think Saginaw was going to get that final shot away. And what turned out to be a disaster for him. It really did because they were looking to cut the deficit to nine. But they turned the ball over. And you watch the clock. Boynes gets this shot off in good time. And instead of a nine point deficit for Saginaw, you see the shot, it's out of his hands. They're now facing a 13 point deficit with eight minutes to go in the game. So Danny Hayes, or rather Quincy Bowens, let that shot go to close out the third quarter. Rose back in the lineup now for the prospectors of Southwestern. A lot of motion down there, a lot of picks used. Saginaw, they really, really got to turn it up a notch defensively, deny the passing lanes, even gamble on a couple of occasions. But when the shot goes up, it's got to be one shot and out for Southwestern, and Saginaw hopes to get back in this basketball game. Leonard heading for a couple. They were patient that time, took some time off the clock, but patient for the open man and got the shot. I wrote in my notes yesterday after watching them play Detroit Northern. Very, very patient basketball team offensively as well as defensively. Northern yesterday controlled the tempo against Southwestern as you look at the third quarter stats. Northern controlled the tempo array, still lost the basketball game. And Southwestern was content to play long seconds of defense and uh, they never never got out of sync but when they got the basketball they knew what they wanted to do with it and again like I said uh, the ability to play different tempos and still be effective that's one of the hallmarks of the Southwest team. Jesse Drain has called for a foul maybe that was the frustration foul his third personal third team foul for Saginaw. Rose at the line. Gee, he's got a pretty touch in there. Very Here patient. Gets set, squares up. Well, well coached Southwestern team. As is Saginaw. You don't get to this, this pinnacle without being a well coached, well disciplined team. Saginaw still not out of it, but they're going to have to start cutting into this lead consistently here on out. 51-34, Saginaw trailing. Trying to get something going. And Drain has the turnaround jumper that time and goes right over the top of the top of Mance for two points. So Drain has his first field goal. Three-point effort will not go. 
Prospectors really aggressive on the boards, but saved this time by Sagan. And only yes, keep an eye on Marcus Buckley. He has just hit his fifth three-point shot. And they got it to within 12. And when I'm talking about consistency, they've got to maintain this run. But there again is the answer in a big way for Southwestern, a three-point opportunity coming for Vashon Leonard. Leonard drops it, and the foul is called on Julian Taylor. And they come back at you so very, very quickly. Waste no time getting into their offensive set. Southwestern, they don't let you think that you're going to get back in it very long. One. Saginaw had it down to 11. They're looking at it possibly going right back up to 14 on this shot. 14 it is. Yep, and Leonard has his first in the line. Seven points in the ball game. The 6'3", 175-pound 11th grader. Drain looking for some help. Derek Smith back in the lineup now. Number 40 for Saginaw. Boy, that one was uh, nothing but air, but they're trying to find something that will get them clicking a little bit. Just didn't work. Baseline puts it up. Yes. That was Mance. Mance has had himself a very good game. Not just offensively. He's been the man that's been guarding Jesse Drain throughout, and he's kept Drain quiet the entire day. Oh, should I say night? We've been here all day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure said? it's night out there now. He said, well, only one more quarter to go. Now let's see what develops on this play. See, Buckley, I thought it was uh, a foul there, but he gets called for the travel. That call for the traveling turns it back to the prospectors. And Southwestern working on it and doing the rebounding. Leonard again. He's had the hard hand here in the second half with eight points, nine points. Players falling all over the place. Foul call underneath. Call on the prospectors. The basket is good. And the foul is called on Milton. Going to the line is Daniel West. You see, just getting in, trying to make something happen as West. Fortunately, he gets it off the glass. He's able to draw the offense, excuse me, the defensive foul that time. 58-41, 17 points, 5-13 to go. And yes, the shot by West is completed to make it a three-point play. And that three-point play snapped an 8 nothing run by Southwestern. Out to Rose, three-point land. Well, that's the biggest shot you were talking about in the fourth quarter, the third quarter. You said, hey, he can hit from the outside, maybe he'll do it. Yeah, I figured he'd demonstrate that ability before it was over. You can't slough off him, you've got to keep a man on him at all times. Yes. Buckley has hit his sixth three-point play. Six of eight from that district. Yeah, he's had a fine game offensively, but very little support. Missed it. And cannot take advantage of the mistake by the prospectors. They fought Time each up. other for the rebound, too. How typical that it would go out of bounds off Saginaw. It's been that type of night. Southwestern 61, Saginaw 45, 427 to go in the ball game. We'll be right back. One of your network sponsors is Denny's. Well, Saginaw won those titles at 42 and 62, and the way things are looking right now, don't think they can do it for 1990. 19,817, the paid attendance tonight. So we go with crowds of 19,186, 20,501 of the afternoon session of the night, 19,817. Here's a little frustration right here. Certainly. The miss layup, and then watch two Saginaw players fighting each other. It goes off the out of bounds off the Saginaw team, and uh, Southwestern regains the basketball. <laughs> How emblematic of the way the entire night has gone for Southwestern, as I said before. Six three-point shots that have been made by Buckley has tied a record for the final round. 
of most goals in a game from the three point land, set by Corey Ward of Saginaw, Melville Catholic Central in 1988. That occurred actually in the quarterfinals. Southwestern in no hurry to get a shot up, but this is not a stall. They will certainly look to score if the opportunity presents itself, but they are going to use the clock. Smart basketball team. Going to the basket with power and knocked out of the hands by the prospectors and out of bounds, and it belongs to Saginaw. 3.52 to go. Saginaw trying to get back into this trailing 61 45, and this may be the year for the prospectors of Southwestern. For waiting since 1973 to see if they could not nail the championship trophy. Goes out of bounds. Got one of our cameramen there. Hey, nice tight shot in there. Right in the action. Nice going, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, Southwestern still playing that harassing defense. They're making it very tough. That's Buckley going for the rest of the corners. Yeah. Good and good at that time. So he goes six for nine of his attempts so far in the three point land. 320, counting down. Prospectors of Detroit Southwestern High. Nice food to go and get a nice play. That was Isley. Had a pretty good ball game with 10 points to his credit. Traveling called against the Trojans of Saginaw. So the way things are looking right now, Saginaw will wind up with a 23 and 3 record for this season. And the prospectors will go undefeated as they start the night 26 and 0 and on their way to recording their 27th straight win. You know, Ray, as one year ends, you look at a team's roster and you see if they've got a lot of juniors, they've got a lot of sophomores, you say, okay, hey, they'll be back. Well, you don't really do that with Southwestern. You just figure that if history means anything, they'll be back. There's they seem to get here every year. Well, they really do. Overall, they've been in these uh, finals 16 times. Been a little bit of a drought as far as trying to get the championship trophy. Saginaw will wait another year after coming to the final. After their 18th, this is their 19th appearance overall. So Sagan, Saginaw at the line right now. And that is Kareem Hammond who hits the free throw. He'll go again down to 248 once the clock gets going again. 63-47. Barry Smades has been our official statistician here throughout all the day and evening on these championship games. And we thank him very much for his help. Another outstanding job. Appreciate it. And to all the guys working and gals working on the floor and engineering and technicians that made it possible, it was fun. Guy says it can be a little bit of a battle of endurance. Drain hits on that last shot. So he's got a total of five in the game. 63-49. Have you fans that uh, joined us today on and off, uh, been through with us uh, most of the day and morning and evening, we thank you very much. Also to our sponsors for these championship telecasts. Thanks for their cooperation and to the Michigan High School Athletic Association for helping us out the past couple of weeks to get this telecast all set. You know, as you look at the Southwestern bench over there, not a lot of celebrating going on just yet. I imagine when the game is over, they'll erupt. But you know what? I believe that the players feel happy, sure, but I think a sense of relief that, hey, they're finally going to get this thing done. I haven't got anything yet as a way of a smile from Mr. Uh, Watson over there. Oh, he's probably breathing the biggest sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, he's still coaching there. Anyone that knows basketball, and certainly I'm sure all the coaches out there will concur with this, and that's that it's so very tough. You have to really, really tip your hat to Perry Watson for getting there each and every year. Garland Vance gets the rebound on the missed free throw and has 18 points to his credit. Rebounded by the prospectors. 
in command. We're down to 121 remaining in this ball game. And Southwestern with a 65 to 49 lead. Kind of had to figure that this would be their night. Yep. I mean, they were very, very businesslike throughout this entire tournament, certainly yesterday in East Lansing. They didn't celebrate at all after getting to the finals. They knew that their work was still ahead. The celebration is beginning. The celebration is starting right behind the bench of the prospectors. Their fans, their student body, and their friends start to celebrate. Foul called on Saturday. This will be called on Buckley. Picks up only his second personal foul. Buckley has been an outstanding player and a losing cause. And there is your Southwestern fans. There's the smile we've been looking for. But, Coach Watson. Yes, but if you look at the bench, still a very stoic bunch. It's the fans. They're celebrating. They're rocking in the stands. Hugging. All of them, I'm sure, saying, finally, we've got it done. And I can guarantee you there are not just current Southwestern faithful up there, but people that have had to endure the uh, the losses throughout the decade of the 80s. I can remember a name of a guy by the name of Antoine Jobert might be uh, saying, hey, I score did it tonight. Oh, Jobert, Leslie Rocky Moore. Got a lot of great ones. Oh, the list goes on and on and on. Lauren Clyburn. Daniel West trying to hit the tree, wouldn't go, and a foul underneath. With 33 seconds remaining, we'll get down to the other end. The prospectors will go to the line. Again, we'll tell you, in case you missed it, in Class B this morning, Country Day in Detroit, knocked off Saginaw Buenavista 59-53. In Class D this afternoon, Detroit East Catholic 72, Covert 58. In a Class C also this afternoon, uh, Saginaw Novell Catholic 78, Ishpeming 59. And with 33 seconds to go in Class A, Southwestern with a 65-49 lead. So Marshall Thomas and his Trojans of Saginaw High will be back at it again next year, trying to climb into this tournament ladder, as will the defending champions in Class A, Detroit Southwestern. At the line was Mike Hamilton. Gets a point, his first. 66-49. You know, we talk about the offense in Southwestern. They play a pretty good brand of defense. No question about it. Well-rounded basketball team. They're going to finish this year undefeated. Yes, from outside, Jesse Drain drains it. Give him three. They were going to need a lot of that from Drain, without a doubt. Southwestern completely took him out of the game. For three quarters. Ah. Contact underneath with 11 seconds to go. May go down to the other end. Smiles on the bench. Prospectors smiling out there in the floor. They got some of the younger players in there. Meanwhile, another story here, as we've seen it in every one of our games, and that means for the cause, the losers. And certainly they didn't play like losers, but it turns out that way. Saginaw High. So we've said it before, Gregory Kelser. The city of Saginaw is going to be proud of sending three representatives to the state championships. And here's the fellow that's on the sideline, Elton Carter. Feels would have liked to have been out there. Yeah, would have loved to have been out there, but feels just as much a part of this. He was there for 25 of the 26 victories. And, uh, or excuse me, I should say 26 of the 27 victories. And uh, he knows that without him, this may not have been possible. It was a team championship, team effort all year. Turnover and the steal is made, and Derek Smith has his third and fourth point. Time runs out, and Class A champion for the first time under the tutelage of Perry Mason has a championship. The final score, Detroit Southwestern 67, Saginaw High 54. We'll be back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the MHSAA Championship Network. Don't go away.
put it in the book. The Southwestern Prospectors from Detroit have won the Class A state title. Now for the awards, awards ceremony, the guy who's done a great job all day long, PA announcer Eric Verseth. At this time, we direct your attention to center court, where Roy Allen, Jr., Director of Health, Physical Education, and Safety for the Detroit Public Schools, and Vice President of the Michigan High School Athletic Association, will make the awards presentations. First, let us honor the runner-up in Class A, the Trojans of Saginaw High. First of all, with their individual medals, number 14, Julian Taylor. Number 20, Lamarck Pleasant. Number 22, Cedric Foster. Number 24, Jamie Lay. Number 30, Quentin Cooper. Number 32, Terrence McMillan. Number 34, Kareem Hammond. Number 44, George Boone. Number 52, Dauda Hill. And 54, Rashawn Williams. And now the starters for the Trojans. Number 10, Daniel West. Number 12, Marcus Buckley. Number 40, Derek Smith. Number 42, Jesse Drain. And number 50, Nate Simington. And accepting the runner-up trophy in Class A, the coach for the Trojans of Saginaw High, Marshall O. Thomas. And now, for the 1990 Michigan High School Athletic Association Class A champions, the Prospectors of Detroit Southwestern. First of all, the individual medals. Number 10, Quincy Bowens. Number 12, Marcus Warman. Number 20, Danny Hayes. Number 21, Kamaya Alexander. Number 22, Quissy Troutman. Number 30, Carlton King. Number 32, Mike Hamilton. Number 33, Hashim Bakari. Number 34, Ken Riley. Number 40, Elton Carter. And now the starters for the champion Detroit Southwestern Prospectors. Number three, Orlando Milton. Number 14, Bashan Leonard. Twenty-four, Howard Isley. Forty-one, Garland Mance. And forty-two, Jalen Rose. And accepting the state Class A Boys Championship Trophy for Detroit Southwestern, Coach Perry Watson.
Congratulations to the prospectors of Detroit Southwestern, the 1990 Class A Boys Basketball Champions. The prospectors are the champions in Class A, but don't go away, we still got more. Stay with us. One of your network sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. Back once again, Suite 147, our home away from home for the entire day here at the Palace. We're certainly glad you could join us. Four state championships completed. The first day at the Palace would have to be considered a booming success. The largest high school crowd ever to see basketball, over 20,000 in attendance for the DC doubleheader this afternoon. In all, over 59,000 fans got a chance to see some of the most exciting games of the year, that being, of course, the state finals. And of course, we'll be back here next year and the year after as well, as uh, we're certainly enjoying our visit with the Palace. I'd like to thank Mr. Davidson and everybody else. You know, high school coaches have to face questions throughout their career. Perry Watson of Southwestern will continue to have to face questions, but as Ray Lane joins him right now, I know there's one question that he won't have to answer anymore. Well, of course, you're saying that right now that, uh, no, he's never going to be a bridesmaid. This guy has been to the altar tonight. You were there, Perry. Oh, yeah. The fellas really came to play. Uh, it's just indicative of the type of season we have. we got a great team. Uh, we're deep, and they just do the things necessary to win. Do you ever look back at your shoulders and say, hey, I've been snake bit once in a while, and I got this far? Well, I guess you can look at it like that, but you know, I've never felt bad because every time we've came up here, we've, we've, we've had a great season, and you know, just unfortunately, we didn't win it. And a lot of times, things are not meant to be, and I think that one of the virtues you have to have is patience, and we, we, we continually came back, and uh, our patience has paid off for us. 27-0, you don't sneeze at that at all. You have the crown, but that is a fantastic record when you go through an entire basketball season. Uh, and you don't lose anything. No, that's right. That, 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 that's tremendous. And also, Ray, the other thing that's tremendous is that we won the Triple Crown. We won the PSL Championship, the City Championship, and the State, and, and nobody else has done that. Uh, and, and that's just tremendous because it's very hard to win those three crowns. If you're a follower of Detroit Southwestern High School and the public uh, school basketball brand, you've had some great teams. And I know you go to a coach and say, hey, I can't compare teams in a where does this stack up? I'm not asking for a comparison, but when you look back now at 12 years, where does this team stack up talent-wise, desire-wise, and of course you get the crown too, but when you look at it. Well, this team really doesn't doesn't take a backseat to any team I've coached or any team that's, that's been around. I mean, we play without Elton Carter, who's one of our top players and who's a, a Division I uh, uh, signee at Penn State, and they just showed you the type of depth. Um, in terms of comparison with other teams I've had, I mean, I've had some teams that could do things better than this one, but this team was just so talented and so deep, and they could just pound and beat you on the boards that it's just a great team. You bring up an interesting point, and that was the name that you mentioned, Carter. Had to be a frustrating evening for him to go down with the injury yesterday and sit there, and he's been with you all season long and can't go to that last game for you, the last mile. Right, and he's just such a class individual. I knew he was hurting. When we talked last night, he was hurting. Uh, but I think the guys decided to step up the intensity uh, uh, level because we knew we couldn't replace him with one man. And I think man set the tone uh, early in the game with that intensity level, and I think Jalen carried on, and we just wanted to make sure that Elton you know left here with some good memories because we, we didn't want him to be trying to shoulder any blame if we didn't get out of here with a win. Barry again congratulations and uh, take a rest now will you? All ya? right thanks a lot Ray. There's a couple of guys that may not rest tonight they are prospectors let's go back over to Greg Kelser. Ray thank you very much and I've got two of the many stars in the game for Southwestern. First to my left we'll talk to Jalen Rosen. Jalen, just a fine job by you, not only tonight, but throughout the tournament and the season. Tell us, what does this championship mean to you? Well, it means a lot because Coach Watson been through a lot. You know, they always talk about the monkey on his back. And, you know, he came win a big one and everyone choked. So we figured we'd go out and win this one for Coach. He deserved it. Tell us some of the things you felt were important to coming out and beating this tough si uh, Saginaw team. Well, we felt if we came with our game, you know, used our depth, played hard in those defense, they couldn't contend with us. And that was the case. Garland Mance, perhaps one of the most intense players I've seen in a long time. Long time. You had your work cut out defensively. You had to come out and do a, a heck of a job on Jesse Drain. You were able to do that. What was the key to your success tonight? Just a lot of hard work throughout the season from coach, 
just a lot of hard work, and I wanted to really win it for our coach and our team. And that's what, you know, the, the goal was, this shit was to win the state, and we was able to do that, and I'm happy. That was just the main thing. I knew I could do it. I just had to dig down inside and do it. That was the basic thing. Now, so many, many players play high school basketball, but very few get an opportunity to say that they played in a state championship game. Even fewer get to say that they won the championship. So tell me, personally, what does this mean to you? Uh, I feel wonderful. I'm just happy to be a part. If it weren't for coach, I wouldn't be here right now. It's just, I'm just real happy. Speechless for words. It's just a great feeling. Feeling I've just been waiting on for four years and I had a feeling. So. Okay, one other question. Jalen, you're going to be back next year. Question right now, I know you want to savor this, but can you repeat? So if, we, if we go back, rebuild, you know, work hard on our defense, you know, we're losing a lot of scenes, you know, we're losing Garland and Elton and Howard. So, you know, if we go back and work hard, you know, fine-tune our games, we should be back. Or I ain't going to overlook anyone. You know, we're just going to work hard and we're going to try. So we're going to give it our best. Okay, great job, fellas. Again, congratulations to Southwestern. Rick, back upstairs to you. Thank you very much, Greg. Again, living proof, the harder I work, the luckier I get. The prospectors certainly earned their state championship. Stay with us. We'll be right back. One of our network sponsors, Farm Bureau Insurance. The Michigan High School Athletic Association Championship State Finals were brought to you by Denny's, the Michigan High School Training Table, Farm Bureau Insurance, sponsor of the MHSAA Scholar Athlete Award, and True Value Hardware Stores, promoting good sportsmanship through the Good Sports Are Winners program. Back once again at the Palace, the Boys State Championships concluded on Championship Day. Let's summarize again what happened earlier this morning, a long time ago, it seems. Country Day from Detroit, Birmingham, defeated Saginaw Buena Vista 59-53. Followed up by that, the Class D game where East Catholic defeated Covert 72-58. Then the Class C contest, Saginaw Nouvelle, got past Ishpeming 78-59. And in the just concluded Class A game, the Southwestern Prospectors defeated the Saginaw Trojans 67-54. Send it down right now to a couple of guys who've done yeoman work all day long. My good buddies, Ray Lane and Greg Kelser. Okay, thank you very much, Rick. Uh, it's been a great day. Uh, it started this morning. Somebody says it seems like a, an all-day affair, but it's been sort of a love affair, too, hasn't it? It really has, and we've been here all day, but I tell you what's been real pleasing, and that's to see the fans. We've had a consistent 19, 20, 21,000 all throughout the day, some great basketball, uh, some disappointment for some of the teams that lost, but as I said, once they get a chance to reflect on the season, they'll realize that they did, in fact, have a fine season, got to the championship game, just didn't get it done, and to the champions, of course, our deepest congratulations. And we've had uh, folks that dropped in from the southwestern part of Michigan and from the UP. And you remember just a few months ago, it says, OK, the basketball tournament is coming to the palace. And I think we've answered it was a very successful transition to come to the palace. Now, let's check the transition as far as final stats are concerned. The field goal department, uh, prospectors are getting a lot of shots. Well, yeah. Good job defensively by both teams, limiting the other team to just 43% shooting. But again, you have to go down to the rebounds. Southwestern dominated in that department, 37-21. And again, many of those rebounds were offensive rebounds, putbacks for points. Turnovers, 19 by the Trojans, 13 by the Prospectors. Bench points just about even. Everything even except the turnovers, that, excuse me, except the offensive rebounds. That was the really the downfall in the game for Southwestern. You know, we talk about the rebounds, and you look there, and you see that uh, Saginaw has a total of 21 finally, but it was a long time before they really got into the double figures there. And by that time, it was too late. Southwestern is a very good team. They get a lead. They have that killer instinct. They know how to put you away. Well, we've enjoyed being with you. I've enjoyed being with you, uh, certainly, Gregory, again. And I'm glad the fans could be looking in. Any final word? Well, Ray, it was great, and I look forward to working with you again. It's been a lot of fun. And for a fellow that uh, sort of told us where to go and how to do it, I want to tell Rick upstairs to thank him very much. He's the veteran of this trio as far as covering the basketball championship. So back upstairs, and thank you, Rick. So long, everybody. Okay, let's do it again next year, fellas. Again, thanks for all the folks that joined us along the MHSAA Championship Network all day long. And thanks for joining us today. Again, the final score in the Class A Championship game was Detroit Southwestern 67 and Saginaw 54. For Ray Lane and Greg Kelser, I'm Rick Berkey. Good night, everyone.